pleasure to have you here, um, meet some old friends, some new friends, <laughs> and, and also to help us talk about uh, trade and relations, uh, trade relations and relations uh, between ways. Uh, this is my uh, the outline of my presentation. Uh, I will start with some theoretical uh, and conceptual issues to, to guide uh, my vision about the relationship uh, between among the countries of BRICS. After uh, uh, we will uh, show you a very uh, general view about uh, the insertion of uh, exports of green mountains in the world economy. Uh, and then finally, we will uh, give some, some words about the uh, trade within BRICS and uh, the intra FDI uh, close uh, among the British companies. Uh, starting with the uh, conceptual issues, uh, in general, uh, uh, the main uh, traditional view about the international insertion and international trade uh, use a very uh, key concept that it's the and uh, this concept is directly related with the idea of uh, allocative efficiency. When you see uh, the trade flows of a country in general, you try to see if this trade relation is uh, trying to uh, uh, put the country in a way that this country is more efficient in a sense that uh, I will say here that it's uh, static. Static because uh, you just see in terms of relative cost if uh, the activity that we are starting is um, where, where um, we are showing uh, growth in international trade, uh, it's uh, cheaper or it's low relative relation to the partner. Uh, and then this is the idea that when you have a free trade agreement or a free trade agreement, it will be in a process of specialization that will put the countries in a, a more efficient level just because you are uh, putting your resources, capital, uh, work, um, capacities in more productive activities. But this is not uh, Maybe sometimes this vision of uh, efficient is not sufficient because sometimes we need to, to add uh, another dimensions. Uh, what I call here uh, the dimension of dynamic efficiency. What is dynamic efficiency? It's a way to evaluate uh, the breakdown of a country not only in terms of uh, relative costs in a certain moment of time, but also from uh, a perspective that uh, uh, put uh, the vision in a more long-term uh, perspective, trying to, to see if the pattern of specialization uh, could generate in the long term more development. Basically, because we, 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 what is important in this vision is not the specialization, just the specialization, but the direction of the specialization. The idea that uh, products and sectors are not uh, equal in terms of impact on the development, uh, usually using a, a very known uh, phrase of uh, Laura Tyson, that is former Secretary of State of the United States. Uh, she said that exports potato chips is not the same as export computer chips. This is the idea that is related with the idea of dynamic efficiency. Sometimes a country has the better conditions to export potato chips, mm -hmm. but in the long term, of course, it's not the same as export or having the 
sort of asset, uh, more sophisticated and more uh, intensive in terms of knowledge uh, problems. Then we can combine this kind of Calderian view from Nicholas Calder that uh, is uh, following some idea of games that uh, the specialization of accounting should be directed towards products and sectors uh, with high uh, demo income elasticity. In the long term, uh, if you get uh, tied with uh, products that have uh, uh, low demo income elasticity, uh, the product that you have better uh, than the problems is very high. This is the first uh, view that can, form, that can compose this kind of dynamic uh, efficiency. And also, uh, Jupiter view that say that specialization uh, must be assessed by the capacity of products and sectors to spread uh, technological progress, uh, incorporate innovation, uh, foster object productivity, and also uh, the capacity to come uh, to pay higher salaries and also to foster the competitiveness in the long term. Then, this is from this perspective of the possibility of um, uh, BRICS countries uh, to uh, the relationship between them to foster this kind of. This is just uh, the share of each country in the total interest expense. And you can see that uh, China is one for half of the total flow. Uh, after we have um, Russia, Brazil. And then India, uh, finally, South Africa. Uh, but uh, to see uh, with another perspective, because this is the total flow of intermediate exports, uh, we can see uh, in a kind of matrix <coughs> of exports from the graph. Here, uh, this is the country that is uh, the export country. And the color represents the partner. Okay. Then you can see the, image, uh, the, the most important flows, uh, considering this monthly trade, uh, 350 billion dollars, billion dollars uh, in 2018. First, we have this part uh, from China to India, 68 billion. Uh, after uh, Brazil. Start from Brazil to China, uh, from China to Russia, and from Russia to, to China. This is the most important choice. Uh, but what is interesting is that uh, because it's, this is the total flow, uh, we can uh, compare the total flow uh, with the total export of the country. When we have this kind of situation, what we have here is that for Brazil, especially for Brazil, uh, sports to Greeks is very, very important, but again, very concentrated in the sports to China. Uh, in the second, we can see that uh, in South Africa, uh, sports to Greeks is the second in terms of importance here, it's responsible for 5.15. 0.4% of total export of South Africa, and again, especially starts China. Uh, and in another side, for China and India, sports shoes is not so important. We have uh, a very small share of total export, for example. For example, uh, export from China to India is just 3% of total export of China. Uh, export from India to China is just 4% of total, and if you see uh, the relation of India uh, and China with Brazil, it's just 1% of relative importance. Then we can say that uh, basically for Brazil and South Africa, we export for uh, to China is uh, very important. For Russia, the uh, intermediate level, and for uh, India and China, not so important. Uh, but what is most interesting, and is related with the idea 
of the composition of the experts is then trying to see uh, like this graph that is for eight country but uh, in terms of total exports, but comparing with the same graph, considering just exports to Greeks, we can see that this uh, aspect of uh, concentration in primary products is, uh, is more evident in the, uh, in the trade, in the exports uh, within the Greeks. For example, for Brazil. 62% of exports of Brazil to Greeks is concentrated in primary products. Uh, for the Russian, 64%, South Africa, 63%. And even if uh, you consider resource based manufacturing, uh, they also have a strong importance in the total trade. Uh, uh, and the opposite is possible to see with China. China, the exports to Greeks, uh, the military products of uh, medium and high technology intensive uh, products is more important uh, comparing to the export of China to the world. Then we can see that uh, first we have a strong growth during the uh, first 10 years of the century. Uh, after, um, I hope it's not so important, but uh, the problem is that the composition of drawing between the drinks is not so good. Uh, probably uh, could be important to have a um, uh, higher participation of uh, inter industrial trade and not so much uh, share of inter industrial trade. Uh, uh, trade, especially with China, of course, because China is the exporter of uh, manufacturing products and imports a lot of commodities, but uh, could be important in the future uh, to change this a little bit uh, in order to change this feature. Uh, this is the, uh, the again, the concentration of uh, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa in primary commodities, and the concentration of China in manufacturing products. It's uh, very interesting here. In terms of percentage of the total BRICS, uh, inter BRICS market position, 95% um, of uh, Brazilian exports to China is primary. Russia, 88% uh, of exports to China is from commodities, and South, South Africa, 86%. Uh, the only country that has a uh, uh, share of affected goods more important is China in relation to all the countries, of course. Then, uh, this is a question that maybe it's important to have in mind. Uh, think about uh, uh, a strategy to uh, have uh, strong economic relations between the countries. It's important to resume the growth, of course, but also it's important to have this kind of change in the composition of trade, especially, especially if we uh, are interested in a relationship that could be more related with the development uh, the development of the countries in the world. Uh, this is the uh, trade balance with China. Uh, for example, Brazil, we have a, a, a total surplus in the trade, the trade balance with China, but it's basically because uh, the export of primary commodities can cover, partly cover the uh, But also, India, Russia, and South Africa, we have this kind of um, trade deficit with China. Uh, in a situation where 
And it's concentrated here just in 2,000 years. It's concentrated in concentrated mining. Uh, but after it started to grow and have more importance, for example, uh, in the infrastructure sector, especially in the electricity sector here in Brazil. Um, then this is an example of how this uh, expansion of uh, international uh, investment of Chinese <laughs> can have a strong impact on Greek on not only Brazil, but other uh, Greek countries. Greek and Greek countries. Um, of course, we need to have more detail about this kind of investments. For example, uh, here in Brazil, when you see the type of transactions, the type of investment that the Chinese companies uh, is doing here, most of them, the blue uh, color, is in American uh, acquisitions. Uh, what means that uh, the impacts in terms of new capacity, environment generation, and value added, new value added, it's not so strong. Then this is a kind of uh, uh, research that it's very important to do to try to find exactly what is the impact of this kind of investment. Not only from Chinese companies, from all companies, but uh, regarding the, the, the economics, uh, FDI, I think it's, this is the main, uh, the main uh, question that we need to follow. Uh, see uh, what kind of investment is going to, to, to produce companies from from other big countries in China, uh, see if they have uh, some kind of spillover to the national economy in terms of um, technological spillover or uh, impacts on, on uh, national providers. Uh, in which sector they, they are investing, if they are investing more in emerging acquisition or in greenfield investments, and so on and so forth. Then, to end my presentation, uh, the main idea here is that uh, we have a lot of opportunity to, to, to have a more deep relation between Greek countries. Uh, until now, the trade flows is more important, but even uh, in the trade flows,